everyone, the gear-headed hamster here, and today we'll be flying high over the high seas in Scramble Battle of Britain. This is a game that recently came out into early access and I saw a few videos talking about it and showing off and I immediately knew I had to get this. Oh my goodness, yes. Uh, basically, the way I would describe it, it's sort of like... Steambirds, but in 3D. If you don't know what Steambirds is, uh, it's an old Flash game. Uh, I'll link to it if I can find a working copy of it. Anyway, um, but yeah, basically the idea is it's a World War II combat simulator, but turn-based, where you plan out your move ahead of time, you hit go, and about two seconds elapse and everything happens and then you gotta do that all over again. Rinse and repeat till you win. Easy, right? Well, no, that's where all the strategy comes in. This is a game all about dogfight tactics. Like, that is this game's bread and butter. If you know dogfighting and know anything about dogfighting strategy and tactics and maneuvers, like, this is up your alley. Uh, definitely. With that said, uh, one, I have to address a few of the elephants in the room. One, I did buy this game on my own, so I did spend money on it. Two, it is early access, not feature complete, obviously. I'll say this straight up, it is rather limited in terms of features. What is there is really good and really fun, but... Yeah, there's like four different aircraft. There's only one ocean map. And, uh, there is a squadron leader mode, which is pretty good. But again, like definitely needs to flesh things out more to call it a full game. As is still, it's a really fun, really entertaining baseline. And so it's a good foundation. The other thing I will say is the game is a little bit buggy. I, I've found quite a few glitches and little errors along the way, so yeah, hopefully some of those get patched because woof. Alright, so let's just quickly go over the different modes. So we got Campaign, which unfortunately is grayed out. It'll come soon. Squadron Leader, which is sort of a procedurally generated campaign. Good enough for me. Missions. Uh, these are predetermined missions. You got training, which shoot to kill, which teaches you how to shoot. Simple enough. Lead your target, where you have to aim ahead of your target. Again, simple enough. Uh, and then two aircraft control, where you take control of two allied aircrafts against two enemy aircraft. And you got dogfight, merge 1v1, friendly fire. Uh, try not to shoot yourself, because yes, you can shoot yourself, also you can crash into yourself, also you can crash into the enemy, avoid all of the above. Check your six, uh, enemy on our tail, and so we have to maneuver out of the way. Outnumbered, uh, we attack a large group of enemies. Stuka interception, attack one Stuka, attack two Stukas, escort Stukas, or escorted Stukas rather. Um, and then we have hard versions of the dogfights and various other challenges and whatnot. I, I'll admit, I haven't played all of them. I've played the training and dogfights. Haven't done the others yet, but uh, definitely on my to-do list. Uh, we have a dogfight generator, which is really cool. So you can change what nation you are, British or German. Uh, like I said, only four aircraft in the game, and only two are playable. The Spitfire, which is a British aircraft, and then the three German aircraft. Uh, 109s, which you could play as. You got 110s, which are twin-engine heavy fighters, which are really interesting. And then you got Stukas, which are, uh, single-engine lightweight bombers, but, yeah. Uh, then you can choose how high you start. From sea level, low altitude, medium, and high. You can change the advantage if you want to start below, neutral, or above the enemy, which is kind of cool. Uh, clouds, which you can change that. Time of day. 
Uh, these are purely aesthetic, although time of day does make it a little bit harder to aim your shots when flying to the sun. Uh, purely aesthetic, but yeah, I guess that's the thing. Um, and then randomize with current setups or randomize all settings. Fair enough. You have instant action, which instantly launches you in a 2v2 dogfight. Uh, how to play which has basically a short tutorial where you have little blurbs of text and a short little animation showing what they're talking about and describing. I'll basically go over this as we play through the game, so I won't go or show everything here. Uh, one really cool feature is it has built-in replays. After the end of a match, you can save your replay and watch it back again, which is really cool. Um... <laughs> Now, admittedly, the replays are not perfect. Uh, I did have one match where uh, there was one plane was shot down by a friendly aircraft, and then I had another friend a plane got shot down by the enemy, and neither plane, after the replay, or during the replay, they both survived. Like, okay, I guess they didn't get shot down. Rewriting history. Yay. Uh, also, one other funny glitch, uh, I'll say, which you have to be aware of, is... Let's see, where is it? Um, Death by Ghost. That's it. So, we'll quickly look at this. So, it was one of the tutorial missions where this guy shoots this guy, and then I can switch control, this guy shoots that guy. We fire at him. He blows up, and then we blow up too. And this counts as a death. Because what happens is we hit their fuel tank, they blew up, but they then lose all momentum, and they stay as a static entity, and we crash into them because they still have a hitbox. Whoops. So, uh, hopefully that gets fixed. Alright. So let's actually do some gameplay. Uh, we'll play the squadron leader mode. So I've already started um, squadron and had a few days go by. Got a, quite a few kills, but also a few losses as well. So let's just continue. So on the left, we have casualties. Uh, these are pilots who were shot down and had to bail. And so now they are taking some rest time just to recover. Also, if an aircraft gets damaged during one of these sorties, they also go into casualties, but they take far less time to recover. You have on leave where you can put pilots here at the beginning of each day to take a vacation and, you know, recuperate. On duty, these pilots can be swapped in with your active aircraft, where you have two squadrons of three pilots each. And when a mission starts, it'll choose one of the two squadrons at random to intercept and deal with the enemy. Then we have time of day progression on the bottom, and we can also see the sortie history, as well as progressing time forwards. Nothing then. Uh-oh, scramble! All right. Well, um, okay. This should be relatively easy. Three on two. Yeah. Uh, oh, one other thing I guess I forgot to mention is the quirks. Different bonuses and buffs your pilots could attain just randomly. Um, like, they sp start with these. They don't really acquire new ones, not that I know of. Again, I just started, so... Um, but yeah, let's start the match. So here we are in Scramble. We got the height advantage, and we can see our enemies way down here. These are 109s, and, you know, sort of the generic German fighter of this game is, is great. It's fine. And we got our Spitfires up here. So just to quickly go over the UI, because yeah, it is a lot to take in. In the upper left, we have our friendly aircraft, 
upper right enemy aircraft. Then down here we have our aircraft damage indicator. Gray means it's fine, but when it gets damaged it turns white or red. Uh, then we have our energy meters. Blue is altitude. Note there's two pips as well, so when the altitude drains it reappears at the top and drains a pip. When it go run out of pips and altitude, you're in the ocean. Try to avoid that. Yellow is your airspeed, and the higher it is, the faster you fly. Note that the aircraft does not sustain high speed damage, so you can fly as fast as you want, but you know, the laws of physics will hold you back. Uh, I think it was like around 500 kilometers an hour you can get up to, something like that. Uh, but yeah, you start already at a pretty decent clip. Maybe it's 550, I forget. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, so you got the pilot portrait and your consciousness meter. Uh, you start fully conscious, but as you do high G maneuvers, your consciousness drops, and if it hits zero, you go unconscious, and your plane flies straight and level for a couple of turns as you re slowly regain consciousness. Needless to say, flying in a straight, predictable line is not very good in a dogfight. Avoid that. Next we have the G loading, which shows how many G's our pilot is taking currently. Next we have the stamina bar, which shows how much stamina drain the pilots are taking. As they take G loads, they slowly lose stamina, and when the stamina drops, the tolerance threshold, marked by the little black indicator, also goes down. And the lower that is, the easier it is to lose your conscious meter. So... Not only do you want to not black out, but you also want to kind of take care of your pilots. Don't push them too hard constantly, or you'll find that they become weaker as a battle progresses. And then down here we have our perks. Various little bonuses our pilots can get if certain conditions are met during the battle. And you'll know if your conditions are met based on the color of the icon. If it's green, Great, the conditions are met and the bonus is applied. If they are white, the conditions are not met and they have no effect. If it's red, it's a negative perk, meaning it actually hurts your aircraft. And if it's yellow, it's a neutral perk where it both helps and hurts your aircraft. Uh, a lot of the information is duplicated for your enemy and you can see the status of their aircraft, which is really sweet. And then in the center we have our controls. So in the center we can yaw or roll left and right. It's a combination yaw and roll. And then we can also pitch up or down. Simple enough. We have throttle control, full, off, or half. I tend to leave it on full because I'm forgetful and if I turn it off I will forget to turn it back on. You also have ammunition, uh, which you do have a limited supply of so don't just spray and pray willy-nilly, you will run out of bullets. And then if things get really hairy, you can either try to leave the mission with your aircraft, or, if you're truly desperate, bail out and parachute to safety. Alright, I think that's enough yammering, let's get on it. So, good news is we are way up high, we have a huge energy advantage. Um, yeah, uh, let's not do anything too crazy, but... We can just sort of turn in like this and get ourselves set up. Nicely done. And yeah. Now we can choose which aircraft we want to follow with the camera. This is fine. And go. All right, uh, I think this aircraft will stay, stay somewhat high. Yeah, so you'll see, uh, so this is a ribbon predicting where we go and little black dashes mean we are taking a little bit of G loading or maybe a lot of G-loading. The dashes just mean we're G-loaded at that section. 
One other thing you can do, which I love, is right now the camera is orientated based on gravity, but if you tap R, it orientates based on the plane. And this is dynamic as you move the ghost around. And for me, as someone who plays a lot of Rise of Flight, as soon as I am able to see things from the perspective of the plane, my fighter instincts kicked in and I'm like, okay, I know, like, I feel like, okay, I feel what I need to do next. So yeah, you'll definitely be seeing me switch back and forth between the views quite a lot. So I'm going to have this guy more or less just sort of hang back, just sort of stay above the action. Um, you're probably going to be more gung ho, gung ah, gung ho, and kind of fly in, be more aggressive. Again, let's not do too much. As long as your G's are below the black bar, you don't take any consciousness damage, which is fine. So, this is a fine maneuver. You can also see what the enemy are thinking. So, they don't like that upper plane. You can also click the enemy to highlight who they think is the biggest threat, who they're attacking. Same goes for you. So, right. One other significant problem I have with the game, I'll just say this straight up. There is an option menu. How, and it's decently fine. Like it gives you the basic essentials. There even is a control rebinding, which is great. And so I spent the first couple of hours just one learning the game and two rebinding all the keys until I was happy with them. And then I put the game down. I quit it for the evening. I picked it back up later on. Guess what? All of those key bindings forgotten. What? Um, yeah, no, that that is definitely a huge, huge red flag. I, that is definitely not something I really wish they would patch. Again, it is still very early access, but it is a pretty significant bugbear. So for now, I'm just learning what their default key bindings are. Um, okay, so in terms of tactics, I'll have you go after the far guy. I can hit X to switch targets. And I'll have you go after the near guy. And again, we're just going to sort of come in. And yeah, just sort of swoop in like this. Leaving you more or less high and dry, just in reserve. That way, if these two get into trouble, you can definitely pounce on somebody and make their life miserable. All right, well, now we're swooping down and I definitely don't want, I don't want to give them an easy shot, but they're also doing a pretty, manu pretty harsh maneuver as you can see by that indicator. And yes, the AI can go unconscious, which is pretty funny and fantastic for me. So, yeah, if I'm just barely above that, I take almost zero conscious damage. Like, it's very slow. It's an analog system where the further along your G loading is, the faster it ticks down. Likewise, the further to the left it is, the faster you recover. So that's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, I might. Hmm. So I'm thinking he's probably going to swoop past and. Yeah, maybe I just go down and then circle to the right. You, on the other hand, you're going to stay somewhat higher up and again, just sort of come in. And again, you just stay very high up. 
One general tactic is keep your aircraft somewhat spread out. Like, don't have them all clustered together. Don't have them all attack the same target. If you can have them attack from different angles, that is fantastic. Make your enemy guess. Make Force your enemy into bad situations. Alright, so they are having a pot shot at me, which is not great, but I am really far away. Still, an unlucky shot would be bad. Ah, but we see one of them has blacked out. You. So you're going to be super easy target for now. Okay, so... Yeah, you're just gonna come down from below. Uh, where are you? You're also taking quite a bit of G-loading. Nice thing is, you are acting like a perfect distraction. Perfect bait. Uh... Hmm. Okay, so they are going to be G-loaded for a couple of turns. The question is, can I do anything about it? I think I can. I'm going to actually roll right and see if I can get on the tail of that guy. Er... So there's two strategies I can think of. Either I continue the turn and try to sweep around... But that's going to take a few turns. The other one is sort of pop up and then come back down on top of them. I think I'm going to try that. Okay, so one thing to... One way to judge how hard you're maneuvering is... Using the little uh, arrows on your stamina meter to roughly estimate how much force you're putting on the poor guy. Yeah, I think this will be fine. You again are just sort of keeping up and out of the way. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to climb a bit just to be a little bit more chaotic. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, is everyone doing something? Yep. Alright. And let us proceed. More shots flying out. Alright. I think now would be a Pretty good time to start rolling over onto one of my enemies. Yeah, I can definitely swoop in and attack that guy. You. What are you up to? Well, you got a lot of speed, but. Yeah, let's not push my poor pilot that hard. Yeah, you're just going to do a big half loop. And then you... Uh, I'm actually going to switch targets because since you're going to have a really good shot at this guy... Uh, which regain consciousness, so he's going to be tricky. Um, who is he after, actually? Is he still... He's still going after you. Well, yeah, we'll see how things play out, but I think I'm going to try a maneuver onto the six of that guy. So... Yeah, 
something like this. So I'm going to be rolling hard left. Alright. Everyone doing a thing? Yep. Let us proceed. Uh, so, here's the interesting duality of speed in this game, where... Speed is both your friend and enemy. On the one hand, being fast means it's harder to catch you, it's harder to shoot at you. You generally can be more, well, maybe not evasive, but like, you cover lots of ground. Yeah, speed is a pretty solid life force of any pilot. With that said, the negative side is with high speed also comes high g-loading and means you can't really turn very sharply. Whereas low speed, you're sitting duck, you're an easy target for the enemy, but you also can make really sharp corners without worrying about blacking out. So it's an interesting problem, but I'm fairly happy with this positioning so far. Uh, yeah, again, you're just going to be sort of coming up. Something like that. And then you... So, we can see both enemies are really gunning for this guy, but... Yeah. We can do a really tight maneuver. Uh, something, I'm, something you have to be careful of is if you pull up too hard, you can burn through a lot of your speed without significant gain in rotation or turning. So, let's do that. Um, I am kind of vulnerable here, but I don't think he can turn over hard enough to actually be of a significant threat. So, there's not really much I can do here. It is a risk, but, I mean, alternatively, I could just fly straight, but that'd be giving up a really good opportunity to get on this guy's tail. So, yeah, I'm going to just fly up and over. Alright, here's hoping I don't get shot at too badly. Whee! Yeah. Okay, so just to let you know, uh, the little white chevrons mean that you're slow airspeed, like this guy. Whereas the angry red chevrons, they mean that you're stalling. And surprise, surprise, you don't want to be stalling. Um, oops, wrong key. Uh, I Yeah, I could pull a maneuver like this, but... My enemy would also have a pretty decent shot at me from here, so... And that depends on how hard he pulls. Hmm. The problem is we're going after each other, and so we're chasing each other's tails, which is not ideal. Like, ideally, I probably should be going after this guy. Um, I mean, considering this guy is the focus of both of my enemies, one strategy is just to bugger out and just, like, pull away and drag the enemies while my allies come and finish them. Uh, do sort of a conga line. That is one strategy, but I think, I think I'm just going to continue this maneuver. Um, 
Yeah, I don't think my enemy will be able to get a shot off on me. Likewise, I don't think I'll be able to get a shot off on them either. So... Uh, do I... Yeah, it's hard to say who I should go after. Both of them are basically in the same position, more or less. As for you... Well, now you can start swooping up. And getting back into the fight. And as far as you, you got a pretty decent shot at the target. Because now they're going really slow. Yeah, maybe not this turn, but definitely the next turn. They're going slow. You could definitely... Hmm. Ah. They got a shot off on me. Not great. Okay, what if I do something stupid? They still have a shot off on me. Okay, so... No need to do anything too dumb. I'm already in a pretty bad position with this plane. But, well, I guess you'll be the sheep waiting for the wolves to come in. Here goes nothing. Ooh, yeah, that was rough. Uh... Okay, so I lost an aileron and my right wing has been damaged. Uh, okay, yeah, you're swooping around as well. Yeah, something like that. Alright, so what can you do? Well, you probably can have a shot off on some of the targets. So, this is a bit ambitious. Okay, who is, who is closer right now? They're both pretty far away. I don't think I'll be able to actually hit anything from here. There's too far away, but I can definitely get closer. You, on the other hand, you have a really good shot. Yeah. And no, I'm not worried about hitting my ally because the thing is, the nice thing about this game, and I'll give it credit, the ghosts are all synced up. So when you see a ghost in a certain position, all the other ghosts will be in the same position at the same time. And so, yeah, uh, by the time I get here, my aircraft will be all the way over here. Nothing to worry about. And I'll be right on this guy's six. So, yeah, let's play ahead of time. Ah ha ha! Alright, so, now let's think evasive, because I got two angry enemies on my tail that really don't, really want me dead. So, uh... Yeah, unfortunately, I can't really turn left all that well. So, I'm going to maneuver right.
Yeah, something like that. Just keep them guessing. You are upside down. Uh, I'm going to temporarily switch targets. See if I can get a shot off. Actually, that looks pretty decent. I do slightly risk shooting my ally. But, um... Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. And then you can... Let's see, what's a good shot? Yeah, half this game is just sort of fidgeting around and trying to line up shots. In reality, they're probably not going to continue flying down. They'll probably nose up. So, I'm going to predict they fly this way. Alternatively, I could aim for you, see if I can get anything on target for this aircraft. Hmm. He does look like the more... Well... Who is the bigger threat right now? I'm going to be flying right. This guy is in better position. Well, this guy... Both of them are in pretty good position, so... Okay, you're going after the guy on the left. You can also... Uh, you can go after the guy on the right. Let it be said. Yeah. So I'm just going to do this as sort of a... Sweeping shot. I think he's actually going to pull up and try to chase me. So, I don't know if any shots will actually land, but... Mm, throwing ammunition downrange, I, I got plenty of ammunition, and... If I get a lucky hit, that's great. If not... Oh, well. So, there we go. Aha! Gotcha! Alright, so something really cool is you can actually mid-turn, or after each turn, replay what just happened. Especially good if there's a really large battle with lots of moving parts and a lot of combatants everywhere. Uh, yeah, really nice feature to have. I love this. So, we can see that they were flying down, and turns out my speculative shots from this guy down here actually landed on target and I did quite a lot of damage uh, coolant radiator oil radiator and the right wing which is huge that suddenly puts on a significant timer on my enemy uh, in a handful of turns they will run out of coolant and when that does their engine fails and they're out of the match so they have only a few more turns to live, which is great. They're effectively out, I just need to dodge them. You, on the other hand... Well, I was correct that they pulled up, just not quite where I was aiming. I think I aimed a little too high, but you can see one shot came very close. Rear. So, I'm pretty happy with that. 
Okay, so they're going left, so my best course of action is to go right. And nose down a bit just to, uh, well, I say gain airspeed. I mean, not lose too much of it. Because, yeah, these planes are in not a great position. This guy probably could get a shot off on me. But that is a really hard maneuver. Uh, as you can see by the G loading. Alright. As for you, you can see all of the times I hit the opponent. So, let's do that again. Uh, actually, I'm going to switch targets because that's already bleeding out. It's losing coolant, so it's not going to be too long for this world. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to do, do a hard left next turn, though. But I think for this turn, that's good. And again, I'm going to be sending bullets just in a vague direction, hoping to get something. You, you have a really wickedly good shot. Um... Yeah. You can... Let's see if I can get most of you on target. Yeah, that looks good. So, I'm going to have a big sweeping action across them. So, let's watch the battle. Ooh, okay, more damage. Uh, did you take any fire? I'm just curious. That's a lot of bullets, but those are friendly bullets. And you are significantly out of the way, so that's good. So you took damage, but I think you'll survive this match, and... I think I'll keep you in the match as bait. Uh, so I could try to leave the match. Problem is I have to fly my plane beyond this red circle you can see in the distance. Uh, if I can get my plane, which right now I'm here. Uh, you actually have a free cam mode, but that doesn't show. Um, uh, yeah, if I can get this point, which is... Currently here, will be here. If I can get that two over here, uh, I can escape the match. But until then, I'm stuck here. I could bail out, but that would be equivalent to being shot down. Very much a last ditch effort. Don't do that unless if you absolutely have to. Uh, you can definitely see the effects of losing that right aileron, because now I cannot turn left. I am trying, but I can only fly straight. Uh, I am full left, and I cannot do that. I can turn right. I can turn right very easily, but I cannot go left. So, that sucks. Thankfully, I am pretty much safe. Like, there is no way this guy can get on target this turn. And this guy is having a really bad day. Let's watch. Uh, so they turn around and do they take any bullets? No. 
he's not. Oh no, I sent. Yeah, that is a bullet hit. Okay, and that took off their left aileron. Cool. So now they are both losing coolant and spiraling into their doom. Fantastic. Alright, uh, I'm just curious. Uh, okay, you have not taken a shot yet, which... That, that can't be. That will never do. Alright, so let us remedy that. Nice, that is a pretty good tracking shot. Keeping them on target basically the whole way. Yeah, that is going to really hurt for them. And I'm going to try to do the same for you. Um, problem is if they turn in really hard, I don't want to do a hit on collision, so... Yeah, I'm going to do this where I do shoot past them, but uh, on the next turn I can pull away and get out of there. Alright, so let us continue. Alright, so now I need to make sure I don't take friendly fire because... You're shooting in a direction where he used to be. So I'm probably going to hold fire on you for a turn while I let my ally get out of the way. You're going to just sort of loiter up here. So yeah, this plane is probably just going to stay up here and sort of loiter about a bit. Uh, basically, I'm setting myself up to swing around onto this guy six next turn or in the following turns. Whereas you, well, you're very slow. Whoop. Uh, uh, I don't really have to worry about. You right now, you are very heavily damaged. You're not going to recover. I just need to make sure I don't get in front of you. Or let you get behind me, essentially. And yeah, this plane will just sort of... Slowly loiter up and... Get into position, more or less. You... I don't know what to do with you. You just sort of hang around. Are they still targeting? Yeah, they are. <laughs> Alright. In that case, just be bait. Don't do anything too fancy. Don't get yourself killed. You just become bait. Just stay where you are. Let me get your next turn. Wait. No. Stay where you are. Don't do anything stupid. Well, look at that. I did actually get... When did that happen? Uh, one other nice thing is I can actually uh, toggle whether I am watching just this turn or the whole match. And so... I can scroll back and yeah, you can see the spaghetti of everything we've done. You can actually go frame by frame as well, but okay, so yeah, in that hail of fire, I did get your, that's right, I did get your radiator. Cool. So that means now 
both of my enemies are have a coolant leak, which means they'll be shot down in due time. Alright, you just sort of hang out, stay f far away from the action. There are a few shots coming at you from this guy, but he's not in a position to continue that fire art. He has to roll all the way over. Alright, so now things are interesting. I do have a shot off on this guy. I am very slow, but yeah, something like this. So I'm going to hold fire. I don't actually have a shot this turn, but I do have a means of getting into good position for next turn. So I'm happy with that. And then you... Um, yeah, you basically just s circle around and get onto his six. That's your job right now. Just be there waiting to pounce when he makes a mistake. And none of us have to worry about this guy. He's very low and going in the wrong direction. So, confirm. Alright, I think this will be a good opportunity. Problem is, the tracker says he's going to nose down. I don't think he will. Problem is... If I'm wrong with this shot, I'm going to have to take another two turns just to roll back onto my right. Or I can probably pitch down to try and chase him, but that would be really awkward. And yeah, you just keep your course and try not to lose too much altitude. And as for you... Well... Hmm. Yeah, problem is, I'm going to have a serious risk of shooting myself here, so I'm going to hold fire on this guy. Just let him gain a little bit of speed, and yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to level out and try to gain speed. All right, let us continue. All right, so they did get a few shots off. So I'm going to deflect away and be kind of tricky. The nice thing is you don't take any G loading by nosing down, which is really good. And so, yeah, all those shots will probably miss. Uh, as for you... Yeah, like I said, I had that one opportunity. They were going right, I'm going left. Now I'm going to have a few turns to try and circle back around and get on this guy's six again. I just need to roll. Um... Actually, one thing I could do is, well, okay, so I can try to force myself level, which does roll myself, but now I'm going to be facing this direction, which eh, might actually be desirable. I'm going to do that. Yeah, it does mean I will, it hurts my speed a little. 
But yeah, I think I think that's the lesser of the two evils. All right, you already are moving. Yeah, I'm going to, again, nose you down a bit just to get some speed and close that distance. All right. Let's continue. All right, well, that was risky. Uh, that's quite a few shots that were in my vague direction. Thankfully, all of them went wickedly wild. And now they're doing some really fancy maneuvers, so... Oh, that ought to be interesting. Hmm? Oh, right. I'm like, why am I not maneuvering? Oh yeah, because I still have that enabled. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's not kill all our speed. And, yeah, you are just going to be... Yeah, just sort of do something erotic. Erotic? Erratic! Um... <laughs> bow chicka wow wow. Uh, right. Now that you have speed, time for you to use it. Let's watch from this guy's perspective. Ah, the smoke ended. That's a good sign. Now that the smoke ended, it means their coolant tank is empty. And yeah, this one already has lost its coolant. So very soon the engine will overheat in just a handful of turns. And then they will automatically try to bail out. This guy, he's plummeting to the ocean. I might not even have to wait for the engine to fail. He might just crash on his own. Right. This guy, on the other hand, well, I might not even have to do anything. I'm just going to not die, essentially. Uh, am I anywhere near escape? Not really. I believe it's based on the center of the nearest enemy, so yeah. Uh, so what is he up to? Okay, he's flying relatively straight in level, so... I can probably pull up relatively hard and th throw him off that way. Start deflecting sideways. He won't have the engine power to keep the battle up for very long. You... Okay, so I am way down there, so I don't have to worry too much about friendly fire. Um, I don't know where he's going to go. I think he's going to try to... Uh, which way is he heading right now? Yeah, he's probably going to roll right. Like, t roll right and pitch up. So... Yeah, I think maybe something like that. And yes, I know it looks like I'm shooting myself, but by the time the bullets actually get there, I'll be somewhere there. So I don't have to worry about that. You? Yeah. You, I would actually have to worry about friendly fire. So I'm not. I'm just going to keep on your tail and just be annoying. Alright, uh, here we go. Oh, he didn't roll right. He rolled left. 
Interesting. Okay. Well, that makes life interesting for me. Okay, can't quite get a shot off on this turn. You continue just flying your course. And then you... So I'm going to just follow your prediction. And yeah, just basically turn hard over. Alright, and let us proceed. Alright, so... Unfortunately, that was an overcommitment on my end. But, that's fine. You still have a shot off. At this point, it's basically just a formality, so I'm going to be relatively quick with the turns. Okay, so, yeah. You can see by the little yellow marks that I just barely get uh, them at the end. That's fine. And you just keep, keep it alive. <laughs> okay, and here we go. Uh, thankfully, you're, you restock with ammunition at the end of each mission, and that's free. You don't have to worry... The only thing you have to worry about is losing or running out of ammunition mid-fight while enemies are still alive. But... Okay. Oh, I was about to say, you're about to hit a hail of bullets. No, those are the bullets you just fired. You don't have to worry about hitting your own bullets from your own plane. Okay, that's a nice sweeping shot. Uh, how's our little friend? Well, what'd you know? They pulled up. What happened? Oh, I see. They saw the ocean. They're like, nope. And so they pulled up, but then they blacked out. Thankfully, they blacked out going up. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. <laughs> You don't want blackout while going down. That that's a bad thing. All right. You also need to keep on them. Yeah, that's really that's what you like to see—a big sweeping shot. And once again, just don't die. All right. Let's see if we can get a glory kill. Well, they definitely took quite the beating. Uh, let's watch that turn again. Uh, yeah, you can also play it, and it animates in loops. But I prefer just to scrub through it manually. And so, one other nice feature I love is you get this... Uh, battle report in the left here and every mark you see correlates to a indicator mark somewhere in the 3d space so we can see uh, here uh, Zed Meyer uh, critical damage right elevator which is the first one and boom that's when that one happens so that's correlated with that then rudder so bang the rudder gets damaged and then the left wing, and boom, the left wing is heavily damaged. So, needless to say, they're having a bad day. Once again, just stay alive. So now it's sort of a race of who can get the kill. Ah, it looks like you got all your sh all the damage was coming from you. Uh, 
that looks really good. All right, so let's continue. Uh, everyone is doing something. Yep. All right, so let's continue. Okay, so what happened there? Our enemy has been defeated. And so I don't need to worry about keeping... Nice thing... One nice feature about this game is even if you tell them to shoot, if there's no enemy somewhere in a cone in front of them, they won't pull the trigger. And so they will automatically save their ammunition. So you can't give them a dumb order and tell them to shoot into the void. They won't follow it. They will only shoot if an enemy is somewhere in a cone in front of them, which is really nice. Now, granted, this cone is much wider than their actual firing arc. So if you tell an enemy to fire and you don't line up your shot, well, you're not going to hit anything. But it's nice if there's, let's say, a very close pass where the enemy will fly past you through the turn. You're not holding the trigger throughout the entire turn. You only squeeze the trigger as the two aircraft pass, which is another really nice feature. But now we can see, unfortunately, they are dead. Uh, if we review the turn, they are living, 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 and then boom. Uh, critical damage fuel tank. Critical damage left aileron. Uh... Lost left aileron. Okay, so the aileron's out. Critical damage pilot. And then dead. So we actually got a pilot kill. The pilot got hit. Right there. And then a few shots later. Boom. We shot the pilot dead. And so they will not be bailing out. They will be meeting Davy Jones down below and then as far as where is the other how are you doing you're spiraling out of control yeah um again you stay alive uh who got the kill by the way Ah, it's this upper aircraft who got the kill. Although the lower one did get some damage in. Okay. Now. Yeah. Um, I'm going to leave you just sort of loitering up in the air like this. Do I bother going after him? Eh, maybe. Yeah, fine. I'll just see if I can do anything. Might not even get there in time. If anything... Yeah, you just sort of do that, you stay your course, and then you fly around and like this. Yep, that looks good. You stay above. You are back up in case the first guy fails, but I don't really want it to come to that. So you're actually going to pull up to try and lose a little speed because you are coming very fast. Yeah, something like that. I'm actually going to loop around instead of trying to 
Yeah, I'm gonna do a sort of counterclockwise spiral. You're fine. Uh, actually, can I escape with you? Yeah, so I'm just going to escape. No need to prolong this battle with this guy. He's not gonna be use. So, poof. And away they go. Alright. You just sort of hang about. And... There's my target. Continuing to drop in on him. Actually, I lost him for a second. Oh, he's over there. Yeah, you're fine. And just continue like that. There they are. All right. I'm actually probably going to escape with this guy. No need to keep him around. And you continue to fly like this. Alright, and so now it's a 1v1, although my enemy is heavily crippled. So, yeah, very much in favor of me. Yay, me. Okay, they're flying under me, so I'm going to sort of loop around. Nice and gentle. Don't need to push myself or my aircraft too hard because, again, pushing hard is what drains your stamina. Yeah, I'm actually going to try to go vertical a little just to bleed some speed. That way I can roll up and up roll up and on them like this. Uh, so they are down there. And now I can basically drop right on them. Although they might escape me if I'm not careful. I don't want them getting away from me. Because they can also escape battle. Uh, thankfully, okay, we are just on the edge of them. So hopefully... Yeah, hopefully I don't lose them. Damn it. Damn, they got away. Oh well. Uh, got one of them at least. And the cool thing is, we can actually watch this back. And see all the different trails and ribbons in the sky. Whee!
took a few pot shots there. And then went after the other guy, which... Yeah, I'm a little bummed that they managed to escape me, which... Oh well. That could have been two kills, but... No. Again, I didn't want to push myself too hard because I didn't want to drain my stamina. But, oh well. Uh, what about... So, what about you? How did you fare? So, yeah, you came in. Looping around. Yeah, you were the target for most of this. Oh no, uh, that was a target. Got some pretty good damage on those two. You're the one who actually got the kill, funny enough. That was a good kill. And that, I like that even the rem remnants of the aircraft follow an arc. Uh, if they don't explode, they do still have a momentum and they do fall out of the sky, which is really nice. Also, yes, you can crash into an enemy corpse uh, as they're falling, which uh, you can even crash into debris of the enemy and that will do damage to you. Uh, I've had it happen. <laughs> it's both hilarious and really embarrassing. Uh, and then as for you, you were the bait. Everyone loved you. You were delicious. So, you stayed up high and tried to stay mostly out of trouble. Then, well, they got a good shot off on you, so... Thankfully... Uh, actually, I think... Yeah, um... Uh, you did have the gain strength when outnumbered, or gain defense, so... Triggered, because you can see it green. That... Probably did help you out, meaning that you only took a little bit of damage and they didn't shoot your wing clean off. It is so easy to lose aircraft in this game. And yeah, the rest of your flight was basically just a big slow loop of the map. Just trying to stay mostly out of trouble. As for my enemies... They swoop down, pull in some pretty heavy G maneuvering just to get on target. This guy loops up around and actually did the damage, got a few lucky shots off. But then had to pay for it pay for it with his life. Although that was a really cool spin they did. I like that. The little aileron roll. Is it a barrel roll? I... Somewhere in the middle of the two. Oh, and a reverse aileron roll. That was cool. But, yeah. Damaged and then really heavily gunned down. You can see the green vapor of a fuel leak. And then lastly, we got this enemy, which, uh, hang on, Oops. Start off with his buddy, the two of them dived and swooped down, but unfortunately overexerted and passed out, which made him super vulnerable. Again, trying to go against that one target. But here, got a lot of unlucky hits on him, and lost an aileron. And smartly, he did dive out of the way to try and, one, maintain airspeed, and two, mostly just get out of the fight. Because of that, I ignored him. And that's essentially what allowed him to escape.
it's funny, he did some pretty interesting maneuvers. But ultimately got away, which... It's a shame. Alright. I'll just save it as the default name. And so, here's a post-battle results. As we can see, all of the casualties that we had here, since the day ended, uh, all of them are now back on duty, although at reduced stamina. So, I might consider putting them on leave again for one day. Uh, the pilot who got shot at, unfortunately, because they took damage, they will be out. For a day, but that's fine. Uh, they'll be full health right as rain for the next sortie. Alright, for now that will end things here. So that was a quick look at Scramble, Battle of Britain. My initial thoughts? They're promising. Again, I really like the base game. I like that there's a lot of great UI elements, like visual feedback on the ribbon. I love, like, you see a little ticks showing when you're taking G-load damage or when you are going too slow or the yellow marks when you're on target with your enemies. Like, great. Uh, great little features. Very transparent in that fact. I like that you can see what the enemies are doing. And yes, the enemies can pull surprises on you, it doesn't show a perfect prediction of where they're going next. It does show enough information that you can get a general idea of what the enemy is thinking, and you can plan around that. It's very tactical in that sense. I really love that fact. Um, with that said, I do have a few issues. Like I said, there are a handful of bugs. By far the most egregious one right now is... Key rebindings are not saved between game sessions. That irks me very hard. Um, the other one, like crashing into uh, a floating invisible corpse, that was annoying. Um, <laughs> there's a few other minor ones, little graphical glitches and little graphical quote unquote mistakes. Where, like, for example, if a pilot bails out of an airplane, you have one model of the pilot falling on his parachute, but the airplane model still has a pilot in the cockpit. So now you have two pilots. It's just a visual quirk. It doesn't actually affect the gameplay, but it's still kind of funny to see one pilot safely parachuting while there's still another pilot in the airplane falling to his doom. Whoopsies. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, really good game with its flaws, and it is still relatively small and limited. So if you want a bigger, more full experience, maybe hold off a while, see what comes down the pipeline. But if what you see is really interesting and you want something tactical, something, you know, aerial combat based, yeah, this, I, I, if you're in that mood and you really want something like this, I do recommend it. It is a lot of fun, and I've been just absolutely loving it so far. Even if I wish it was a little bit more patched up. But, you know, fingers crossed. Anyway, uh, this has been the Gearheaded Hamster, bidding you good night. Fly safe, folks.